Hi guys, my name is Alec Markson and I'm a senior here at the University of Minnesota majoring Agricultural Industries and Marketing. And I'll be talking to you today about Governor Mark Dayton's new buffer strip law for Minnesota agriculture. So, in recent years, when you go to your favorite swimming spot, have you noticed more algae and seaweed than in previous years? In many cases, this is due in part to high levels of phosphorus runoff that enter these bodies of water from sources such as agricultural farmland when timing of chemical applications are not um, well timed. So, on the, on the contrary for this, I come from a farm that is located in the most agriculturally productive crop growing county in the entire country. Um, even within this one county, there's extreme differences in how farmers implement their practices and use sustainable things. So farmers are extremely busy people and use a wide variety of practices when it comes to their farming practices. So Governor Mark Dayton is spearheading this buffer ship law for Minnesota agriculture that is attempting to solve this water quality issue. Because in, in recent years, Minnesota's water quality has been declining and a lot of people have been pointing to agriculture as the source of this decline of water quality. So a vegetative buffer strip is a strip of perennial grass that separates a waterway and an agricultural field. So the main goal of these buffer strips is to eliminate non-point source pollution from agriculture. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, non-point source pollution is pollution that enters the environment over a large area and contaminates the environment. So as you can see here, this picture on the left shows uh, some of the sources of non-point source pollution, including agriculture, as you can see here. But well, one thing that makes non-point source pollution extremely different, difficult and different from point source pollution is that it cannot be uh, traced to one specific area. It enters the environment over a very wide area. So that's what makes this problem very tough to solve. And buffer strips eliminate 90% of the sediment and 75% of chemicals created by agriculture according to the Agricultural Best Management Practice Handbook for Minnesota. So this, this works extremely well in these cases because the picture on the right is an example of a vegetative buffer strip. As you can see, it separates the agricultural field from the waterway. And this perennial grass works well as a great, works very well as a filter to get rid of this. So this law is a great first step towards improving the Minnesota's water quality that has been declining. However, problems arise when it comes to the exact logistics of the law. Currently, the law has a 50-foot buffer width requirement for all agricultural fields that border public waterway, no matter what their size or any other factors that I'm about to discuss. So, as I stated earlier, there are many factors that influence how much chemical runoff a field actually produces. And these things include the way that farmers farm, so they can implement sustainable practices that decrease the amount of runoff their farm produces, and things such as geographical and environmental factors unique to each individual field and individual farms. So as you can see with these two fields on the screen, um, the topography of the land is very different. One field, one field has a very large slope, other one, the other one is completely flat. So the one with the slope, if chemical applications such as with phosphorus are not timed well, a lot of this could run off these slopes and end up in the waterway. But under this current law, both of these fields have the exact same buffer requirement, which doesn't seem to make very much sense to me. So, according to Bruce Peterson of the Minnesota Corn Growers Association, if a farmer can prove that they implement out of the ordinary sustainability practices, they should be able to have their buffer width requirement reduced. So my solution to this dilemma is an individualized buffer law that will take all of these relevant factors into account while still greatly improving the water quality of Minnesota's waters. This law will be scientifically based and take all relevant factors into account that influence how much runoff each individual field produces. These factors include the topography of the landscape, the soil type of each individual field, the timing of chemical applications, how much precipitation each area receives, and farming practices that are implemented, such as sustainability practices, or if farmers are reckless, then, they, then it should be shown that they need a larger buffer requirement. This, will, this law will only take farmland out of agricultural production where it is truly needed to be turned into a buffer strip to help improve Minnesota's water quality. As according to Dr. Michael Boland of the University of Minnesota, if the buffer law goes into effect in its current state, it will take 110,000 acres of land out of agricultural production. And this is extremely important because farmers are working diligently to try and meet rising global food demands while increasing the efficiency and reducing the environmental impacts of agriculture. So, it is ultimately up to all of you to reach out to your local government officials and leaders of agricultural groups to voice your concern with the buffer ship law in its current state. Less than 1% of the U.S. population is directly connected to agriculture, 
So the farm, so farmers' voices need to be heard, and they need your help doing this. Implementing an individualized buffer law is both environmentally and economically friendly, and is something that all groups can get behind. Ultimately, the environment is what is at stake here. So getting a buffer law passed is in everyone's best interest to help preserve the environment for future generations while providing them with an adequate food supply. Thank you.